This video is going to be ridiculous. This is a Reptile Party at Model SC Nature Center YouTube channel. Welcome to another episode of the Reptile Parties and YYC Nature Education Center YouTube channel. And this week uh, we are going to talk about one of my favorite species of snakes. Uh, this is a species that uh, I've been in love with for years. Um, not just because of their size, but they are just a really beautiful snake. They are a very intelligent snake. Uh, and that is Southeast Asia's reticulated python. So this is George. Uh, George is about 14 feet and around 60 pounds. We uh, renamed him for the tour. So if you're watching this, uh, one of the tours, uh, one of the staff uh, previously worked with a uh, retic named Julius Squeezer. So we, uh, we decided to dub him that for the tour. He doesn't have ears. He doesn't care what he gets called. Um, but uh, that introducing him as Julius Squeezer definitely gets a much uh, more humorous reaction. And this is George. He's a reticulated python. Um, so he is a boy, uh, estimated between 10 to 12 years old. Uh, they estimate that based on his size and being a male. Um, the males don't get as big as the females. So one of the questions that, uh, you know, we as educators get asked all the time is what is the world's largest snake? But there's two answers to that, just like with a lot of other animals. So for example, uh, elephants are the world's heaviest land mammal, giraffes are the world's tallest land mammal. So the heaviest snake on earth is the green anaconda, which is found in uh, the Amazon basin in South America. Uh, the longest snake on earth is the reticulated python. So it's the girls that get quite a bit bigger. It's the girls that can be uh, in excess of 200 pounds. It's the girls that can be 15, 18, 20 feet. If you, uh, Want to see me wrestling with a much bigger retic? Uh, you can check out the card right here and uh, and see a video from when I was at Little Ray's Nature Center out in Ottawa uh, with Tyler, who's been on this tour with us, and uh, we're trying to wrestle wrestle ourselves a big one. And uh, its head was literally <laughs> on the floor behind my back, and its tail was basically touching the floor. Uh, and I'm six eight, so that gives you an idea of how big that snake was. Um, George is being a good boy right now. Um, and being quite happy to kind of sit here contently and hang out on me, which is nice. Um, he is has been one of the absolute stars of the tour that we did. Uh, the response every single time that he uh, was brought out uh, was uh, absolutely incredible. And uh, we're going to show you that now. I don't believe you. Are you ready for the last animal? I guess that's acceptable. What do you want to see? All right, St. Cameron, bring us a snake. You are not Cameron, and that is a snake. This is Julius Squeezer, the reticulated python. Now, of course, we get asked all the time, what is the world's largest snake? So my question to you, what's bigger, an elephant or a giraffe? A giraffe. Let's try this a different way. Put up your hand if you say it's elephants. Put up your hand if you say it's giraffe. Put up your hand if you don't want to participate in this year if your kids are looking forward to drinking on a patio later. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
or unfortunately you'll be working too hard to go do that. <laughs> Elephants are the heaviest, grass are the longest, or the tallest land mammals on Earth. So both, both answers are correct. The heaviest snake on Earth is the green anaconda, found in the Amazon basin in South America. The longest snake on Earth is the reticulated python. Julius is 13 feet long and 70 pounds of solid muscle. Cameron is 5 feet tall and 87 pounds of adequate muscle. Who do you think is stronger, the snake or Cameron? I see some pretty strong looking gentlemen in the audience. The guy over there that I'd be afraid to wrestle. This guy here looks like he's got pipes. Who do you think would be stronger, the snake or these guys? The snake. Correct. It is a huge snake. And you know what? The girls get even bigger. Some girls that can be 15, 20, 25 feet, over 200 pounds. So that's one of the things that like really made this tour um, is you know getting to work with Fiona, which we showed in our last video, and uh, and this particular snake. Because where I live in Alberta, uh, you can't legally have retics or berms. You can't have alligators, and that's not a bad thing. Um, but you know certainly they're not for everybody. Realistically, they're not for most people in terms of a pet. Uh, they are an animal that, you know, especially as you get larger in size, which should always be a two-person uh, handling. Uh, so if you're cleaning the cage or you're feeding them or taking them out or anything like that, um, we always have someone with us when we are working even with George at, at, uh, at 14 feet. Um, you know, I don't take this animal out alone um, because they are very, very strong. Uh, he is about to shed, so he is uh, a little bit duller than, than uh, usual. Uh, once that shed comes off, he is an absolute stunner. Uh, there are some uh, variations to retics in terms of uh, color morphs. Uh, I don't think quite as many as the Burmese, um, but uh, you know, in terms of their natural color, like this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful snake. Uh, so for the purpose of the tour, uh, he has been eating two large rats uh, every two weeks. We, we feed him a smaller meal more frequently um, because when you're, when you're taking animals out consistently uh, or you're traveling with them, uh, you don't want too big of a meal. Uh, it'd be kind of like us after Thanksgiving or Christmas. You know, you don't want to go and get jostled around and be running around and stuff after having a big meal. So while he could eat something like a chicken or a rabbit, uh, and, you know, even some bigger ones you can feed like day-old uh, or um, stillborn goats and pigs and things like that, fetal pigs. Um, we wouldn't want to feed him that big of a meal because it would just take him quite a bit longer to digest that. And we create a lot of memories with our programs and our tour. I don't want one of those memories to be half-digested chicken regurgitated all over the stage. That would not be a, a pleasant experience. Um, so there, compared to a lot of other pythons, they do have the heat pits, but they're quite like they're not quite as, as defined and large as they are on, say, like a, a green tree python or a, a, a Amazon tree boa or, or even ball pythons. Um, now that I've moved here, they start moving around a bit, which is, which is cool. Um, so they, so they are yawning. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be able to get a. I'm not trying to get a screenshot in there of his mouth open. Um, they do have teeth, uh, obviously, and uh, you know, big teeth because they're a bigger snake. Um, so you don't want to take a bite from one of these guys. Uh, retics, they're kind of. Uh, they all have their own individual personalities. There are retics that are complete jerks, and there are retics that are giant puppy dogs like uh, like George here. Um, but you know, when you're getting a hatch, then you don't entirely know what you're going to get. And that is the biggest issue with, with these snakes. They are available in many states, uh, in many other countries, uh, even like 
just Ontario, I think, um, in, in Canada. And so people get a little hatchling and they go, that's a beautiful snake, I want it. And they don't understand or realize how big that's going to get. Um, you know, rescues often end up filled with these guys uh, because people went, oh, it got like 12, 14 feet long. That's too big, I don't want it. So I'm gonna get him, so I can get him to stretch out here and we can just sort of get a look at his, uh, his body. Like this is a lot of snake, and when he wants to move, it's a lot of snake to move. We have uh, hands-on opportunities at the end of the show, and it's always a two-person job, and sometimes he just sits there. Sometimes he's like this and starts exploring and checking things out. you got to kind of be aware of where he is at all times. Oh, no, some of the skin is starting to slow a bit in my hands. Um, unfortunately, with giant snakes, you don't really get the, uh, the, the one-piece big shed. Uh, I wish that were the case, because I would love to have his shed before he heads back uh, to Ontario. But uh, hopefully maybe we'll get a couple of nice big pieces before he heads off. So, uh, basically, if you can legally have a retic, uh, don't. Um, not a good choice for a pet snake, because there's so much strength, there's so much size to them. And even me, you know, if he if he wants to be really active or if he got startled and tightened up, like it's gonna be it's gonna be a wrestling job for me. You know, he's pushing against my hand and it's it's a lot. So do not recommend as a pet. Please don't get retakes when you're not ready for them. Um, yeah, so that is a reticulated python. Uh, you know, a fairly iconic snake. Again, unfortunately, one that. Uh, Someone has a bad reputation, um, you know, people in places like the Philippines and stuff are afraid of them because of fear of being eaten. Uh, they can be considered pests because they will eat small livestock or get into a chicken coop or stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's all about respect. Snakes don't eat people. Even at this size, we are not something that uh, they would consider food. Uh, our shoulders are too broad. Um, we're just, we're not an easy meal. So they don't eat people. That is a myth. So... If any of you are thinking, well, wait a second, I had a friend who had a snake, who had a python that was, I think, around that size, and they slept with them, and the snake kept getting longer and firmer like a board, and they went to the vet, and the vet said, you need to get rid of this, imagine we have to eat you. Well, you have been <laughs> duped by a story that has floated around since before the internet spread misinformation. Um, snakes do not measure their food. If uh, he had to lay down next to, say, a small freshwater crocodile or saltwater crocodile or monitor lizard or rodent or something, uh, to measure it out to see if it was small enough to eat, that animal would leap. It's not going to hang around and wait to get caught and eaten. So that is an old wives' tale that we continue to hear with a surprising amount of frequency. Um, and it's just not true. Right, you're not gonna eat me, are you, George? He agrees. Uh, so that is our video on the retic. Um, I'm gonna miss him so much. Uh, this has been such an honor and a privilege to get to, to work with this animal and uh, and show him to people. Uh, a lot of people on this tour have never seen a reticulated python, never seen a snake this size, and uh, and there isn't a retic on display in Alberta or Saskatchewan. So uh, I think there's some in Vancouver. Greater Vancouver Zoo, but I'm not entirely sure. So most of Western Canada doesn't get to see an animal like this unless uh, it's an ex through an experience like us. And so that is why we do this. As much as it's cool for me to, you know, have the opportunity to work with a snake like this, uh, and you know, is kind of a ego boost and something great to have on the resume. Uh, at the same time, it's all about education, whether it's in person or uh, through these videos and just showing people animals that they might not get to experience or understand and learn about them. So if you want to keep learning about animals like George, uh, like a whole bunch of other animals, we have two years worth of videos. So check out some of our old stuff. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff on the snakes. We have other giant snake videos. We also have videos from Africa. We have videos with sloths, with bears, with wolves. So hit that subscribe button. Check out some of our previous material and support us on Patreon. Uh, you get first look at our YouTube videos, 
you get uh, all sorts of exclusive behind the scenes content and pictures and videos and stories about what it's like being uh, working with these animals, uh, stories from our history. So check that out. It starts off with just a few bucks Canadian a month. And uh, also, if you're in the area, that also is kind of our membership. So you can uh, get discounts to come here at the Nature Center uh, or at future events if you're a Patreon subscriber. All that information is below in the description. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, we appreciate every single person that does. And we will see you next time.